40 mile long area and there's at least five major archaeological sites and at least five to 10,000 people will be, be displaced when the Dow Dam is complete. When is this going to be constructed? Don't know. There's no timetable because the Sudanese government does not want the local people to know the timetable and begin to organize as they've done before. So we go to the Dow Dam. Here's a brother that we've just met. So took us in. Uh, this is Dab Shembo, his family, took us in, uh, and they're Nubian, by the way, in the northern Dow Dam area. These are his children. This is uh, one of the local friends. And um, uh, you can't see this that well, but this is a typical Nubian home in the area that will also be flooded. And um, he also had, he called the young brothers to take me to some of the archaeological sites that will be flooded once the Dow Dam is complete. So we catch the boat across the Nile, and here's a place called Kuma. And Kuma is a many different structures on the island of Kuma that have really not been excavated at all. So we go, uh, many different structures, they're gonna be flooded once uh, the dam is, is uh, constructed. So I went into some of these structures, you see pot fragments, you see bones, and this is just scattered about. So who knows what the detailed history of all of this is about because it has not been thoroughly excavated. But there's many structures in the, excuse me, in the Dow area. So we continue, this is uh, Adele, who's my <coughs> colleague's brother. And uh, this brother, Ehab, he just took two days out of his schedule to work with, help us. He was excited. These brothers are excited, they're more excited than I am to, to learn about the, the local history. So they said, look, brother, we just need a camera so we can videotape and record the local people in the villages. And uh, so they want that. So these brothers are running ahead. <laughs> so I was telling them, you can run ahead while I document this, but don't touch. Because you've got to take in situ photographs, in situ video footage. In other words, we don't want people to disturb the area. We want to record it exactly like it was. So these brothers are running ahead, and Adele is so excited. I had to keep telling the doctor, look, just stay in your lane and let me do <laughs> what I've got to do. Stop touching the artifact. And he was so excited, this guy. And uh, so this is a rich archaeology. Oh, by the way, this is uh, this, this here is Sai Island. Sai Island is a big area with numerous archaeological uh, sites on the island. Sai Island, S-A-I. And um, here you have the brothers uh, in front of various structures. These are fragments of, of rocks that were used for construction. There's also pot fragments here. Here's the remains of a, of a church here. All this is going to be flooded in Sai Island. It's a huge island, and it's going to be gone. This is part of the old uh, church here. You have another structure here. This is Gelgeta area. All this is going to be flooded, and I know time is, <laughs> is moving. Uh, here's Adele. He was so excited to take pictures of his own uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, yeah, so he's he's excited. He, he's bugging me about sending pictures of him in front of I said, Brother Gibbs, I'm going to catalog all of my photographs. You know, see what you so, so you can be cool. Just relax. But he's so excited. And then uh, I talked to my colleague on Skype today. He was in Germany. He said that now Adele has created a, a new site on Facebook. And he's energizing all the people on Facebook. I know he signed me up for something, but uh, I couldn't read all of the Arabic. But my colleague told me today, yeah, uh, he's looking to recruit people. So he's so excited. But you go into these structures, and here you have some cow skin here. You know that there hasn't been a lot of excavation because you have things still there. Right? Many, many, many different things. So we're in the whole island of the Dow Dam area, and we have is somebody that wants to participate. And I'll show you what we decided to do. So anyway, this is more of Sai Island here. You have some of the black top pottery. These are only fragments of it here. Uh, you have an old fortress, a church, many different things uh, that are um, here. You have some columns made out of granite. Because it's made out of granite, I know it's from the old period. They stopped building in granite later. So here you have just the columns that survive. And, um, and then look at this structure here. These interesting structures on Sai Island. These brothers were running ahead. They were so excited to, <laughs> to check it out. And uh, very helpful, I must say, though. And finally, the, 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 the tourist police caught up with us, so he's checking our documents. You don't see his gun, but they, they, thought, I, they thought they had us, but we had it all worked out with our documents. Here's a lot of tomb areas, many tombs, many burials. And this is what you see. 
There. This is obviously what? what? Foot. All the bones here, skull. You have people going into the sites looking for gold, looking for treasure. And uh, again, Adele's excited about getting in there first, so he's, he's, he's checking it out. I said, brother, don't touch. <laughs> Hands off. So, because here you have somebody's put rocks on top of burials just to at least give some people a measure of decency. Here you have a skull. This is the chin, mouth, nose, eye socket and back of the head. Mm. And, and this is what you see. Here you see the teeth, right? And that's, uh, I'm sure it would have been buried more, uh, buried than this, but that's what the grave robbers left. Here you have a person facing in that direction, the back of his head, neck, the back. You can't see this, but this is the backbone is actually exposed. It's kind of amazing some of the things you actually see in the field. And I'm showing you this because you weren't there. It's not a matter of just going around and taking pictures and disrespecting people, but we have to show you what's happening in the field so that you can get an idea. So there has to be a proper burial, a proper recording of these areas before the flooding actually uh, takes place. This is a whole burial uh, complex that has not been fully excavated. The bones thrown about. You have to have a, you have to be a specialist in osteology or studying bones to even know. But it just so happened that you here you have you have the, the bones weren't um, they weren't splittered as much as they normally are. So even I can make out what part of the head and body you represent. Take a look a close up of this. This is actually hair. Can you imagine that? After all this time you have burials um, in the whole area, it, and this will be flooded, but there's a need for work. Here's a shaft among many shafts that we found. Brother Ehab is checking it out, and we didn't really have time to go in and investigate. It didn't seem like it was a lot in there, but you never really know till you really go in and dig. And then there had been some work by uh, one of the archaeological teams, but uh, there's a lot more work to, that has to be done. Take a look at this. This is what you find sometimes you have mummies. There's a 3,000 year old mummy with braided, you see the braided hair? Looks pretty similar to a modern girl. So a lot of work that still has to be done in the area. This is the Dow Dam area. Here's uh, Ehab's home. This is a typical Nubian home here. Um, take a look at this where I was sleeping outside. I had to sleep inside. Uh, and this is, uh, notice the pattern. This is made out of cow dunk. So cow dung is very useful, and to say the least. Uh, here he is here. Now, I don't have time to show you, but before we left the area after a couple of days, he had, he, had a, he, uh, he wanted to sit down and give a message to the people back home about what people can do to help save Nubia. So we would look out, show you at the end, but a Save Nubia campaign, and this brother's willing to do whatever he can in his area to help with the project. These are a lot of people who are Nuba. These are some of the original Nubians. They're on the other side of blackness. I had to sneak this picture in because the brother said he didn't want to, us to take him because he had drunk too much that day. <laughs> but I got one in anyway. So here's some of uh, the, uh, the Nuba people um, in the area. And uh, these, uh, anytime you see somebody dressed like this, it is burning hot in the desert. What are they doing? They're going looking for gold. This is how they make whatever money they can make. Just like here in California, in the 1850s, people came looking for gold. And many were not successful. They thought they would earn gold, go back home, and after they strike it rich, it didn't happen that way. Same thing here. The brothers go in poor, they leave poor. Anytime you see these tents in the desert, you know that people have been out there looking for gold. That's pretty, so let me show you this, the cash bar dam. Here's the one that has gotten the most... Uh, the most focused because there's uh, a lot of political organization. If you go to YouTube and put in a cash bar dam, you'll see in 2007, the local people organized in a Jetty village in Sabo, and they, uh, they were shot down by the, the Sudanese police. Peaceful protests who wanted to stop the dam. So anyway, the cash bar dam is a flashpoint. So anyway, this is going to flood a 42-mile area, and there are hundreds of archaeological sites that are going to be uh, submerged in thousands, ten, at least 10,000 or more people. So here's the, the dam station. They had to uh, move away from the dam station because of all the protests. So they want to go back in secretly when the people are not looking and not aware. Here's the, uh, here's the, the cataract area. 
here's the cataract and here's the cash bar village and uh, and then some of the other local villages. So I was very fortunate because within an hour of going, I met the archaeological director of the whole site. This is the man that knows as much about this, the area of cash bar as anybody. Uh, again, we were sleeping outside in the desert. You know, the desert hot in the day, it is cold at night. It is absolutely freezing. And after 12, it is cold. So anyway, this is early morning. The brother's trying to warm up here. But it was just easy to, uh, and here he is. He's running ahead again because there's another structure. Here's a fortress, 32 fortresses in the area, 32 fortresses in the area. So a lot of fortresses, a lot of barriers. And by the way, when, when the Chinese were doing a feasibility study, they found 161 burials that nobody knew about. So the local people stopped the Chinese from the excavations when they started to find these 161 burials that nobody even knew about. And look at the rock art from the Cash Bar area. It is known for the, the, the fortresses, the archaeological sites, but also the inscriptions. What do you think this is? Giraffe. Some, something in the horse family, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. But when I see something like that, I'm, 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 uh, I'm reminded of the ancient combs. Take a look at this. A, 3,000 B.C., 